हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल अनफॉग विथ डॉक्टर अतहर परवीन इन दिस क्लास वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एच एस टी आर सिलेबस बेस्ड केमिस्ट्री चैप्टर इज क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्स एंड दिस क्लास इज द पार्ट टू लेक्चर ऑन क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्स बिफोर मूविंग ऑन प्लीज डू सब्सक्राइब इफ यू हैव नॉट सब्सक्राइब टू दिस चैनल एट एंड ऑल्सो इफ यू आर लाइकिंग माई वर्क प्लीज डू लाइक दिस वीडियो एंड शेयर अमॉन्ग योर फ्रेंड्स and other hstr aspirants as well and uh, i also have a telegram channel please do join the telegram channel for future updates and to stay connected with me so in the previous class i mean to say the part 1 of classification of elements we have discussed dobariner's triads newland's octaves mendeleev's modern periodic table periodic trends of modern periodic table in this class we are going to discuss uh, transition elements and inner transition elements and their properties and also we will be discussing important and expected multiple choice questions based on transition elements and inner transition elements so let us start the class as we have discussed in uh, one basic chemistry class based on periodic table there are four type of known elements in periodic table they are s p d f blocks based elements if you have not watched that class i mean to say the basic chemistry class based on periodic table i will give the link in the description uh, please try to watch that class because that class will give you one uh, entire uh, gist on periodic table and uh, i am sure that that class will help you in understanding all other chapters based on hstr chemistry syllabus okay so coming back to the periodic table there are four type of known elements the s block and p block elements they are called representative elements the d block elements are called transition elements and f block elements are called inner transition elements in this class we are discussing transition elements and inner transition elements so here we can clearly see the transition metals right from group 3 to group 11 they are going and uh, it is starting from atomic number 21 scandium to hasnium atomic number 108 okay so the red border group here no the red border elements they are all transition elements or transition metals and these two periods of uh, lanthanides and actinides which are uh, continuation of uh, lanthanum that is atomic number 57 and uh, continuation of uh, actinium atomic number 89 so these two periods no which are showed with a red mark arrow here these are uh, inner transition elements actually these elements are part of transition elements only but because they are placed as inner part of the group 3 that's why we call them as inner transition elements okay now let's start with the transition metals basically transition metals are also known as transition elements and they are a group of metallic elements which occupy the middle section of the periodic table as i have shown here in this figure and uh, these transition elements or transition metals they are well known as uh, d block elements because they have partially filled d subshells okay and some common examples of transition metals they include iron copper zinc and nickel and many more are there as you can see here in the diagram but most commonly iron copper zinc and nickel they belong to these transition metals now let's talk about the properties of transition elements these transition elements they have high melting and boiling points because they are having strong metallic bonding between the atoms because of that strong metallic bonding we will have to provide uh, much and much heat in order to melt those elements or if you talk about their liquid form then also you will have to apply much and much heat in order to make them boil that's why we say that they have high melting point and high boiling point and uh, the speciality of transition elements is that they are having variable oxidation states 
they can exhibit these uh, multiple oxidation states because they are partially uh, filled with d orbitals right now these d orbitals they can easily lose or gain electrons best example to give for variable oxidation state is a copper you can see that the copper is having a two different oxidation states it can oxidize with the plus one also and with the plus two also the name given for cu plus one is a cuprous and for cu2 plus we call it as a cupric okay so this is one speciality the variable oxidation states is one speciality of a transition elements next is that these elements they are colored compounds many transition metals they form colored compounds because of the presence of partially filled d orbitals because these d orbitals can absorb visible light and give the compound its characteristic color and the next property is the very important and application based property which is the catalytic activity transition metals are often used as a catalyst in chemical reactions why because they are having the ability to form temporary bonds with reactants and they have the low activation energy which is required for the reaction to occur now what is a catalyst catalyst means it is a you can say that element which is present in that particular chemical reaction and it will make that chemical reaction happen in a faster manner but it does not involve in that chemical reaction okay so catalyst is a that element which is present in the chemical reaction but it does not take any part in that chemical reaction okay only its presence only speeds up that chemical reaction so many transition elements are having a quality because of which they can be used as a catalyst in chemical reactions now what is that uh, capability or uh, ability of that uh, transition metal which makes it to be used as catalyst it is their ability to form temporary bonds with reactants okay if you want to uh, just make one uh, brief summary about the characteristics of transition elements i have it here first is that uh, except mercury which is a liquid at room temperature all other elements they are solid metals which exhibit all characteristics of a metal that's why we call transition elements as a transition metals also okay and then these are transition elements they show variable oxidation states uh, unlike the elements present in snp block only only those elements which are present in uh, d block they only show variable oxidation states next is that uh, these transition elements uh, and some of their compounds they show this catalytic properties and uh, of course their compounds are colored and uh, they have great tendency to form complex compounds okay another important point is that these uh, transition elements they form alloys and interstitial compounds also okay so these were the properties or characteristics of transition elements now coming to inner transition elements these are also known as the rare earth elements and these are a group of metallic elements that are located in the two rows at the bottom of the periodic table i have showed you in the diagram in the starting of this class no those two rows which are separately located below the periodic table not the bottom of the periodic table they are known as the inner transition elements or rare earth elements okay now these rare earth elements or inner transition elements they have partially filled f subshells that's why we say that uh, they are belonging to f block right so these are the f block elements because they have partially filled f subshells and some common examples of inner transition uh, elements they include cerium lanthanum neodymium still so many are there prosodymium samarium europium the, that list only is there no they all belong to inner transition elements and what are the important characteristics of uh, inner transition elements they are uh, mostly man made elements means they are not naturally occurring they are having high luster means they shine 
and they are having high electrical conductivity and usually they are bonded with non metals and uh, the other name for uh, this inner transition metals are uh, lanthanides a group of elements which belong to lanthanides and group of elements which belong to actinides lanthanides and actinides they are nothing but the inner transition elements or uh, rare earth elements okay Now let's talk about the properties of inner transition elements. First to know that many inner transition metals are radioactive and they can emit alpha, beta or gamma radiation. This is very very important point of uh, inner transition elements. Next is that they have uh, strong magnetic properties because of the presence of partially filled f orbitals. This is another important uh, perspective of uh, inner transition elements because of the partially filled f orbitals they are exhibiting strong magnetic properties and similar uh, chemical properties are present among uh, all inner transition metals usually all inner transition metals they exhibit similar chemical properties because they have similarity in the electronic configuration in their outermost electrons that's what we told no partially filled f orbitals we tell no that's the reason why they have similar chemical properties and because of uh, strong magnetic properties they are used in magnets and uh, electronics they are used in production of magnets electronic devices and even lighting also for example neodymium is used to make magnets in hard drives and speakers so this can be asked as a mcq you have to remember that neodymium is the one element which is used to make the magnets in hard drives and speakers okay now what is the difference between transition elements and inner transition elements elements which are placed in group 3 to 12 in the middle of the periodic table the modern periodic table they are called transition elements while the elements which are placed in two separate rows at the bottom of the modern periodic table they are called inner transition elements and of course we are talking about the incomplete d shells right so the transition elements they are belonging to d block and the inner transition elements because of their incomplete f subshell they are belonging to f block okay so transition elements belong to d block in modern periodic table and inner transition elements belong to f block in modern periodic table okay now to see this is the summary you can say in one diagram only i am showing you the transition elements and the inner transition elements the yellow color elements or are, are transition elements the green color elements are all inner transition elements except this uh, la and ac atomic number 57 lanthanum and uh, atomic number 18 actinium so these two also belong to inner transition elements okay now let's discuss few important multiple choice questions first question which of the following elements is not a transition metal you can clearly see that iron calcium copper and zinc is the options given here calcium is not at all a transition metal other metals iron copper and zinc are transition metals so with this question you must understand that you need to know the names of the elements which are the transition elements and you also need to know the names of the elements which are the inner transition elements better to know them with their atomic number if you cannot uh, learn with atomic number at least have rough idea about the elements present in a inner transition elements uh, group and uh, the elements present in a uh, transition elements group at least you should have a rough idea which element belong to which group okay next question number 2 which of the following properties is characteristic of transition metals what are the options low melting and boiling points lack of reactivity variable oxidation states formation of non colored compounds so we have discussed all the properties of transition metals with that we can decide that option c variable oxidation states is the right answer this is the speciality of transition metals okay next question number 3 inner transition elements are also known as of course they are known as rare earth elements 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग प्रॉपर्टीज इज कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ इनर ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट्स हाँ विद द ऑप्शंस ओनली आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड लो रिएक्टिविटी लैक ऑफ मैग्नेटिक प्रॉपर्टीज रेडियो एक्टिविटी फॉर्मेशन ऑफ कलर कॉम्पाउंड रेडियो एक्टिविटी इज द स्पेशलिटी ऑफ इनर ट्रांजिशन एलिमेंट्स ओके नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग ट्रांजिशन मेटल्स इज यूज एज ए कैटलिस्ट इन हेबर प्रोसेस सो कैटलिस्ट मीन्स यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट इज अ ट्रांजिशन मेटल बट फ्रॉम द ऑप्शन यू शुड सी विच वन इज अ ट्रांजिशन मेटल कॉपर आयन निकल जिंग नाउ इवन कॉपर इज अ ट्रांजिशन मेटल देन हाउ टू डिसाइड द आंसर आयन इज ऑल्सो अ ट्रांजिशन मेटल फॉर दिस यू शुड नो दिस हेबर प्रोसेस वॉट इज हेबर प्रोसेस इट इज अ प्रोसेस वेर इन यू आर converting this atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia nh3 this is done by reacting with hydrogen nitrogen and uh, hydrogen react together and uh, in the presence of a catalyst which is iron okay iron is the catalyst which is used in this haber process okay this haber process is uh, the production of uh, liquid ammonia you can say and this is happening because of the reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen so if you know this process then you will know the answer also because iron is a famous uh, catalyst which is must to be used in this haber process okay so option b will be the correct answer next question which of the following elements is commonly used in production of magnets and electronic devices i told you right neodymium is the element which is commonly used in production of magnets and electronic devices next question number 7 which of the following inner transition elements is used in the production of fluorescent lamps so this is also one important question the fluorescent lamps uh, production is made using a uh, europium europium is the transition element which is used in the production of fluorescent lamps okay next question which of the following transition metals is commonly used in the production of brass brass if anyone have played with the uh, Uh, toys which are made up of brass or some people also drink water in the uh, utensils made of brass you can see the color and you can decide that the brass is made from copper okay it is some like sort of a golden color no not exactly golden you can say copper color is little bit different there are copper jug and all are there no so using that copper they make this brass items and brass items they look golden color okay i can show you a diagram also of a brass uh, utensil maybe so this is the picture of a brass utensil now i think you got my point what i was uh, trying to tell you so this is known as brass which is made up of a uh, copper okay next question which of the following inner transition elements is not part of lanthanide series so obviously if you see carefully the lanthanide series cerium gadolinium and samarium belong to lanthanide series whereas uranium belongs to actinoid series the second row uranium belongs to the second row of inner transition elements whereas cerium gadolinium and samarium they belong to first row of inner transition elements okay next question which of the following properties is not characteristic of inner transition elements which is not characteristic of inner transition elements means it is a high reactivity high reactivity is not characteristic of inner transition elements whereas uh, radioactivity and uh, magnetic properties uh, formation of colored compounds they are all uh, characteristics of inner transition elements okay okay friends this finishes your uh, chapter classification of elements from hstr syllabus chemistry okay so i really hope that this class helps you please do like share and uh, also subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed it and please do join the telegram channel okay thank you all the best bye